Hello. Today's episode number 117 of the Professor Slots podcast discusses what happens if you win a $60,000 jackpot. Are you ready? What's your plan? Plus, in this episode, I'll be covering the current state of slot machine casino gambling in the great U.S. state of Arizona. Thank you for joining me for the Professor Slots podcast show. I'm John Friedel, and this is a podcast about slot machine casino gambling. It is where I provide knowledge, insights, and tools for helping you improve your slot machine gambling performance. In case you missed it, on my last episode, I went over how Nevada's regulations leads the world's gaming industry, including slots, from my weekly live Q&A session on YouTube. Further, I reviewed American Samoa slot machine casino gambling in 2020. I hope you enjoyed listening to my last episode as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Remember to visit ProfessorSlots.com slash subscribe to get my free report revealing the top seven online resources for improving your gambling performance, including the one I've used as a top-tier slot machine casino gambler. Here's the audio recording of my latest live stream Q&A session. Hello, Slots enthusiasts. How are you? My name is John Friedel. Welcome to Professor Slots, a channel devoted to mastering casino slots so you can win your way to success. Maybe you've won many hand pays already, and maybe you haven't won any. Either way, there's always the possibility of a bigger jackpot than you've ever had. Maybe you've won hundreds of dollars, but are shocked when you first win thousands of dollars. Or maybe you've, you know, you've won thousands of dollars, but then you find out what it's like to win a jackpot worth tens of thousands of dollars. As you master casino slots, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, through these live streams and my other content and consultations, I expect you to win more and more often. Like Steve from North Carolina, who commented, <clears throat> excuse me, who commented in the live chat recently that he'd won over 50 hand pays in the last year based on my content. Imagine what that must have been like. And I've been there. It kind of blows your mind. Um, uh, so it's important to be prepared in advance uh, to win big. Shock. Awe. Oh, hey, we got a winner. <laughs> Thank you, Chuck, uh, for the uh, show that. Um, thank you, Chuck, for the uh, $20 uh, um, uh, super chat. He uh, has a, added a five cents to it because it's the fifth time he's done that. So he's given a total of 100 bucks uh, during these last five uh, live chats that he's been, he's been on. That's wonderful. Uh, feel free to do the same. It supports the show, supports my business uh, to keep it going. As many of you know, I was laid off um, a Oh, gee, just over three months ago, and and I've got maybe a year left, uh, maybe the end of next year, January of 2022, to uh, be able to replace my six-figure, low six-figure um, aerospace engineering um, uh, salary. So, uh, you know, every, every little bit helps, uh, and I do very much appreciate it. Thank you, Chuck. Um, so it's important to be prepared in advance to win big, shock on confusion was what I went through to learn this myself, but your experience doesn't need to be like that. Uh, today, we're going to be diving into what it's like to win a big, big hand pay. Um, so it's great to see you all here again for that's coming up. Uh, it's great to see you all here again for another pod, Professor Slots podcast episode and live stream. If you're with us live, be sure to say hello and ask your slots related questions. I'll get to those a little later in the show. Um, uh, right. So uh, are you ready? Are you ready to win a $1,000 a sixty thousand uh, dollar slot machine jackpot. Are you sure? From making the bet to income tax preparation, I'll go over. I'll go over everything you'll be faced with having to deal with. One of my biggest issues with slot machine casino gambling has been the surprises. I, I, I you know, I, I would win an unexpectedly large jackpot, and. It was just so far outside of my experience. So I've had to go through all this and learn the, learn the ins and outs. And <clears throat> I'm sure there's more to learn. Some of what I learned was very specific to me. I was living in a, uh, I had local income taxes for the city I was living in. I don't know that everybody has that. So, you know, it's all very uh, specific often. 
anyway, we'll talk about some of that. Uh, and then hopefully you can share more in the comments, um, live stream or, uh, on one well, of the podcast listeners can, can reach out to me through email or, uh, 702 slots is my voicemail, which also accepts um, uh, uh, text messages. Right. So, so one of my biggest issues with slot machine casino gambling has been surprises like winning that a, a very large jackpot. Um, of course, of course, it's possible to win big jackpots. We all know that's possible. So why not be ready? Here's what to expect if you win big. I won 90 taxable jackpots in nine months in a U.S. state, Ohio, where slot machine jackpots became auto, became automatically taxable at $1,200. Um, I sometimes call this a taxable limit, but it's all taxable. So it's the automatically taxable limit <laughs> of these. Uh, but of these hand pays, three of them, only three of them exceeded $10,000. On average, one in 30 of these 90 jackpots exceeded $10,000. And they were very evenly distributed. You know, it, by 90 taxable jackpots, it was right around, what, 30 and then 60. And then towards the end, um, I got another one. <clears throat> so it wasn't like they were all right there at the beginning of the 90. It was even, you know, pretty pretty nicely distributed. Um, I suppose I have another 30 tax. I, I've gotten more tax, taxable jackpots than the 90, but I'm not yet up to 120 um, because they, you know, sold the casino and I've been working on the book and other things. So, um, right. So when I get to 120, I'm, I'm, I'm going to see if, if it holds true, but it will be a, um, a different situation uh, with all the, re, uh, you know, casinos being sold. So let me make sure that goes away. Right. Uh, so my first, uh, oh, and this does not include the $40,000 cash option I got for winning a car at the end of those nine months. My first big jackpot was for $27,000. I was stunned. Um, so far, this is my largest, even now, this is my largest jackpot one playing slot machines. I won it early on Saturday, December 21st, 2013 at 5.40 a.m. at Horseshoe, Cincinnati. 5.40 a.m. when I got there, not too much before that. So that would be which one? Um, uh which strategy, number five or number six? It wasn't the day after a holiday. It was close to holidays, December 21st, right? Christmas is 25th. Um, so it wasn't uh, a holiday a few days away. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, big promotions uh, beforehand. Saturday, Friday night, Friday before. The Friday before Christmas, what do you think? Because you don't have a big promotion? Sure. So I was there to test that, actually. Uh, but... Um, Horseshoe Cincinnati has since been purchased and renamed Jack uh, Cincinnati Casino until recently. Then it was sold again uh, last year and only recently have they put up the signs uh, saying Hard Rock Cincinnati. So it takes like six months for new owners to put up signs after the purchase, which you can find out about on a W2G and you can be one of the first to know. Um, um, right. Uh, I remember getting my WT jackpot and looking at it going, you guys sold? You know, and that was all you knew about it, unless you're you know, reading the financial reports, I suppose. So anyway, I won this $27,000 hand pay on a red, blue, white sevens slot machine. This is uh, in the high limit room. Um, it, uh, I'd made a maximum bet, uh, two credits, on a $10 denomination slot machine. Uh, and uh, so I... I I was checking to see if I could cycle my bankroll on this slot machine. I was testing to see if it was a winning slot machine. Now, this was uh, three symbols, uh, physical reels, that type of machine. But, we'll, but some people lately and some of the messages I've been getting and the conversations I've been having, I'm calling it old style. Um, they have always been there, but these new penny machines with, you know, six foot high, three foot wide video screens um, with all the stuff that's going on there. Now, those are really becoming something else, right? But this was a physical reel, three reels, a slot machine, two credits, $10 denomination. I made a $20 bet. So it was a moment that I remember uh, clearly. Uh, it was very early in the morning. I'd started my session at about 4 a.m. and had, had already won a small hand pay. Uh, so it was my second of that morning. 
So I started about four o'clock by five forty. Um, you know, I was on my second uh, hand pay. I figured it was a good time to go. Right, that's uh, two hand pays in an hour and. 40 minutes, not including maybe 20 minutes for processing the first one. So two tampays in just over an hour. Anyway, uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> moving away from um, uh, winning slot strategy number five or six, one's holidays, one's promotions. Anyway, um, uh, I remember it clearly. Um, I remember seeing someone win their own hand pay behind me. Um, but I couldn't see how much. Uh, a f- I knew it had to be over ten thousand dollars, though, because that hand pay was not serviced by two slot attendants. So, you know, the primary slot attendant and the verifier. If you haven't had a hand pay, well, now you know you have two. Except you don't have two um, slot attendants when you win over ten thousand dollars. A floor manager was there with the slot attendant during their hand pay. So that's why I know it must've been over $10,000 as the floor manager and slot attendant walked away from uh, uh, taking care of that hand pay. They began walking by me just as they, and you know, this is kind of detailed, but just as they approached my $27,000 jackpot hit, I looked down, saw the 2,700 credit hit, and, you know, a $10 slot machine, $10 denomination slot machine, and looked up at the floor manager looking at me and swore. I mean, that was embarrassing. I don't usually swear. But at that moment, I felt the need to do that, do so. I'll have you know a little bit of personal stuff about me. I find I do the same thing when I slide into a ditch. It's, I have it. <laughs> so and I don't do it enough to eliminate my bad habit. But, um, anyway, uh, but at that moment, I felt the need to swear. So I swore right while looking the floor manager in the eye. He kept walking now with a frown. I called out to him to explain, excuse me, sorry about that. I didn't mean to swear, but I just want a jackpot, a really big jackpot. And they came back. Uh, right about then, within a few seconds after the slot machine hit, I basically went into shock uh, since I'd I, seriously uh, uh, not pretending. I mean, I um, didn't have a heart attack or anything like that, but uh, I could tell it was surreal. I mean, it was um, what's that? What's going on? Um, uh, I parachuted once. Uh once. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's not courageous unless you go a second time. Um, but I, um, I remember, you know, this was back in the day I was 17 and you had to have, they, nowadays you have to have someone in your back and they take care of all the business and you just enjoy the ride. Uh, but back then they had the hook and the cable and you jumped out, got out by all by yourself and jumped out, jumped up out, out of the plane, off the wing, off the little stand they have up above the wheel and you're holding the strut for the wing up there and and you're just like let go <laughs> and and um i kind of went into shock there it was the same kind of shock um and uh uh you know years later i uh, won that twenty seven thousand dollar jackpot and i had the same feeling of hmm? what uh since I'd start, you know, since I'd started gambling again after nearly ten years, this was wow, seven years ago now. Uh, was it seven years ago? Yesterday? No, twenty first. Another week. One week from today. Seven years ago. Um, so uh, right about then, uh, within a few seconds, you know, I wanted to shock, and and then I but. Since I'd started gambling again uh, just a few weeks before, after nearly 10 years of not gambling, my biggest jackpot up to that point in the few weeks beforehand since I'd started again uh, was $5,000. Uh, I'd won it. I won $5,000 three times over the last, eh, call it a month. Uh, it was more like three weeks. Let's see, let's see. It was November. Oh, no, it was December. So it would have been about a month. Yeah, month and a week. Uh, six weeks. I was at five weeks of gambling yet uh, there. So, um, okay. So um, it was those $5,000 wins. Those all three of them were kind of hard on me. You know, here I am uh, winning $5,000 hand pays and I'm like, I, what, <laughs> you know, I won 1200 was fun the first time. And you know, I think the first one was like 37, 35, 70, something like that. Um, and so that was like, 
wow. And then, you know, 5,000 later that, that first day, um, was my last jackpot at my seventh that day. And, um, when I first got started and, um, you know, I was just like kind of reeling from that, but the 27,000, I was like, I have like a $500 car. I could buy a pretty good used car. <laughs> um, uh, I was just like, Amazing. So, um, yes, I remember it quite well. Um, I, I know we all like to reminisce about if we have one, I reminisce about our first uh, hand pay, but this is my first big hand pay. And it's also something I reminisced about. Um, it was five times larger than what I highest had ever gotten before, um, more or less. Yeah. High, five thousand, five times larger than the, yeah. Um, uh, so it wasn't easy. I remember telling the floor manager how unreal and dreamlike it felt. I even asked the slot attendant to pinch me. She did. They didn't help. Um, and after the hand pay, I had trouble deciding what to do next. Should I just go on with my day? Should I stick to the plan I had had in mind? Or was my plan uh, of gambling all day ruined? Hint. You're done. Go home. Can you imagine how I was feeling? I, I know some of you can indeed imagine it. I know some because some of you have won even bigger jackpots while playing slots. Um, uh, yeah. Um, are you ready to win a big jackpot the next time you play a slot machine? To be ready, you'll need some basic essentials like your government-issued ID. But there are other ways you probably want to be ready, which... We'll go in over in a moment. You'll need the government issued ID to receive a taxable jackpot at a casino. That's crucial. If you don't have it with you, nice casinos, well, I've seen this happen, nice casinos will let you go to your car for it. But I don't think you should count on the casino letting you go home for it. That locks up the machine for an hour or whatever and and um, or more. And they can't really afford that. It's more than the price of the jackpot. Um, so if you're anything like me, you you um, might find out yourself, uh, um, find might find out, find yourself not being quite yourself after winning a big jackpot to be ready. Think it through in advance. Make yourself a plan. Then if or when it happens, all you need to do is remember the plan. My martial arts instructor used to talk about that. Um, you know, we'd practice, we're all friends. Um, we'd practice te techniques and rolling and, <clears throat> you know, kicking and punching um, with pads or not with pads and, you know, shadow boxing uh, sort of thing. And uh, sometimes he'd sit us down and say, you know, are you ready? Uh, are you ready for it not to be a friend? Uh, are you ready for it to be serious? You know, we practice three, you know, an hour, three times a week. Uh, and, you know, if you actually get in trouble where you need that sort of thing and can't get out of it, um, you know, all you've done is practice with friends, you know, people you love and care for. Um, so, um, you know, to, some preparation is great. Um, and more preparation is often better. Um, so to be ready, think it through in advance, make yourself a plan. Then if or when it happens, all you need to do is remember the plan. It doesn't have to be a complicated plan. Just ask yourself this simple question. After you get the hand pay, will you stay or will you go? There will be more decisions to make, but that's really the most important one. At least it is to me. As I tell my college students, I don't care what your plan is. I care that you have a plan. And not having a, we're not having a career discussion right now, but I, I think you get the point. Will you leave the casino or will you make a day or night or day and night of it? <clears throat> Personally, I'd leave. I'd leave as soon as I could. I didn't know that in advance. I did not know that in advance of my biggest jackpot, but I do now. That's my plan. What's yours? Comment in the live chat or on this video if you're watching it later. If you're listening on the podcast, leave a voicemail or send a text message at 702-90-SLOTS, area code 702-90-SLOTS. And I'll, uh, you know, respond and, 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 you know, let me know about your experience. So let's check in with the live chat to briefly say hello. Uh, wow, lots of comments. Um, Greetings, everyone. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, RS, uh, Rudy is here. Um, yeah, Rudy's been sharing um, uh, more than a few pictures of, of his wins. Uh, I don't 
I think he's up to maybe two hand pays now, one or two. Um, uh, but a lot of the wins are un- under the $1,200 uh, automatically taxable limit. Uh, and um, yeah, uh, Steve's here. Good morning, uh, Steve. Uh, he's uh, Steve is in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh, yes, Rudy, good morning. Um, <laughs> Rudy uh, has an interesting way of playing slots. Uh, uh, it works for him. Uh, he feels his way through it. And he says, I have a feeling I, I, I will win a big jackpot soon. <laughs> Good luck, Rudy. Um, I'm sure we'll see pictures later. Uh, hey, hey, Joseph. Uh, Joe. Uh, Joe is in Arizona. Welcome. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, Rudy shared that it's been one month since his last hand pay. Uh, <laughs> um, I, yeah, uh, trying to repeat that on the same machine, same time uh, of the day, same day of the week. Um, uh, you can do that for four or five weeks and you'll find yourself um, with better odds at, at, at some casinos. Some casinos uh, do this for their own reasons. It's They're doing something else, actually. The crowd is um, coming through and, and there's something going on then. Um, yeah, just be careful. Uh, let's see, tomorrow is not a holiday, it was one month ago a holiday, as long as it's not too different of a day. Um, that's something you definitely want to check. When it works, it works. Uh, and it works great. And I've done that. Uh, I was able to do that one casino, didn't have a didn't have any effect at all in another casino next door. Um, and but when it works, you know, that's what you from then on, that's what you do until they get a new owner. Like it, that's what Horseshoes Cincinnati had. Um, so you might try other horseshoes uh, around the around the country uh, for that particular technique of coming back, um, you know, walk away, come back later at the same time, maybe five minutes earlier or a week later. Um, you know, everybody's interested in the slot strategies. There's videos on these um, that are available. Uh, and Magpie says uh, his biggest jackpot was 15K. Um, uh, and... Let's see a two by ten by five five dollar machine. Hmm. Oh, uh, the uh, three reels, two x, ten x, five x. That was the winning combination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Michael, uh, here's a question: Does the hidden casino reminder or sale get any notice or effect on, in the reports of any? Uh, so, um, if you Go to professorslots.com slash ABC27. Let me see if I can type that in for you um, to answer your question, sort of answer your question. It's a great way to to see this. So ABC27, professorslots.com slash ABC27. That's a shortcut. That'll take you to the ABC Evening News website uh, for Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, where they interviewed me uh, last year and uh, uh, they will, they, they did an investigative reporting episode. It's like seven minutes long or something, uh, about, um, the Hollywood casino. Uh, it's called Penn national, uh, in Harrisburg. Uh, and they go, I talked to them about state returns and all this. And, and this was a newly opened casino, I don't know, 10 years ago. And it was, it got a lot of people into it, uh, by being winner. And then, uh, Nobody has been winning a lot lately and there's a lot of complaints. So they did this news news article on it and he went through the, I showed him the return statistics. Pennsylvania offers those by month or by year. Anyway, um, uh, it's all in the report. Hey, Jing Wok. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, uh, Jing Wok says uh, his biggest uh, jackpot was 15,820 on August, uh, in August, 2019. Wonderful. But, uh, this, so this news article at, at um, uh, in Harrisburg, uh, they, they looked at a newly opened casino and the wonderful returns, the high returns, you know, and what the limit was. And it is a little expose on that with interview with, you know, me throwing in there talking about, um, you know, uh, all the stuff that I talked to you with you about. Um, uh, and, and you can see that, you know, it, it dropped. It, it, that first year was great. The, the second year, whew, you know, it's been below a certain limit ever since. And that's the sort of thing that you can see. Uh, 
if you are in a state which has a casino has been sold, I haven't gone and looked at the one in, in Horseshoe to see the reports from Ohio, <clears throat> but that can be a little difficult. I mean, the, the, the difficulty is when was it sold? Nobody knows. I mean, maybe it's in the financial reports someplace, or maybe you get a W2G and see the names changed. And it's not like it's another owner. It's the bunch of owners, but one of them gained more than 50% ownership. So, so when that happens, um, yeah, I can feel it when I'm in the casino. I can say, wow, I'm not getting nearly, you know, the, the jackpots now that it's a new owner. That's part of the reason why I'm not going there now, because the new owner just made changes. Sometimes it takes like a month because, you know, it's the, they, they have to execute their plan um, at the new you know, casino that they just bought. But six months later, when they finally put up the signs, you know, it doesn't happen then. It happened back when it was purchased a little after. So anyway, that's, that's kind of answers your question. I always like to take a certain amount of time uh, every show uh, and try to answer these questions about halfway through. Um, and uh, let's see, we have, uh, come on. Oh, 37 people watching, um, which is, you know, great. So yeah, about halfway through, I try to answer these questions. Um, all right. Uh, right. Um, so that was Michael. Uh, Rudy says his largest jackpot was $2,500 and his wife's was $6,500. Um, it's not a competition, but she's winning. Um, uh, Richard from uh, Western North Carolina. Uh, Richard and Lisa are listening. Um, and uh, I did, should have maybe selected that. Yeah. Um, right. Uh, Chuck says his personal best uh, was his first hand pay. He made a 75 cent bet on a mighty cash double up, mighty cash double up, paid uh, 9K. Um, and I want to try to share more of these comments for those of the, for those of you in the, um, uh, watching the video later. <laughs> so many comments, it's just flying by. <laughs> uh Yep, there it is. Um, right. So Chuck uh, told us about his. Um, yeah, thanks for sharing on this. Uh, everybody, you know, what's your biggest hand pay? Um, Mag by uh, my casino now has my ID and file. I <laughs> uh, love this idea of prepaying and um, planning to win. Uh, Thank you. Uh, having been through it, it would seem like an obvious thing to talk about. Uh, so he left after his $15,000 win uh, and they gave uh, you a check. I will be talking about options uh, uh, in a moment. Um, oh, Rudy says he's had two hand pays and his wife said had three hand pays. Once again, not a competition, but she's winning. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, Richard says my... Uh, uh, video and audio uh, upgrades are are better. Thank you. Um, I was astonished uh, to 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 see what improvements uh, a new computer can bring. Um, I also like that's kind of different direction and and all that. Um, right. So, do I have any tips? Uh, some guy <laughs> six seven six uh, says, "Do I have any tips on um, winning?" Uh, progressive machines. I'll show that. Yeah, sure. Um, if you go to my channel, uh, is it, I have to remember the numbers for them. I think it's strategy two. And I, I, t I talked for like nine minutes about it. Um, I've talked on an hour long on my live stream about it. So if you want to find uh, those two videos, if you want to find those two videos, um, then you can uh, get the answer. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, Jan says my highest hand pay. Oh. Thank you, Mag Magpie Eleven, for the ten dollars donation. Donation. Um, yeah, I, I'm in. I'm in engineering, or was. I guess I still am. Always be an engineer, uh, and uh, that's one of the things that we'll sometimes say to each other. Um, yeah, it's, I'm glad that you were able to do that. It's not a competition, but if it was, you'd be winning. <laughs> um, 
they say you want to have uh, particular um, turns of phrase. If you want to have a good YouTube channel, um, have fun, be safe, make good choices is one of them. Um, I'm trying to add bang to the conversation, but I keep forgetting. Uh, but this whole uh, it's not a competition line. Um, if that's well liked, then maybe I'll make a new logo or something. Um, uh, right. Da, da, da. Right. So uh, back through the live chat. Um, yeah, I like, I like the idea that a, a casino has your ID on file. Um, wonderful. Uh, I mean, it, when you sign up to a player's card, you give them like your social security number in order to be able to issue a W2G. That's what I've experienced. They didn't really have my ID on file because I had, I'd had to prove I was that person. Right. So photo ID, um, they still need that. Right. Or I suppose you would have your player's card. Um, uh, two, 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 two. So that was the progressive question. Uh, Jan says her highest hand pay was $2,950 on a Panda machine at Turkey Creek Casino in Northern Michigan. Turkey Creek. Um, I've been by. Awesome. Uh, let's see here. David. Hi, David. Um, my friend hit. <laughs> uh, when you say my friend, do you mean my friend <laughs> hit 1.3 million dollar jackpot but he only bet 20 cents and only received uh eight thousand dollars uh that was a few years ago um I, I imagine that's quite the story uh one of the key things that i try to talk about here is how much did he spend uh sure it may have been a 20 set bet but you know if he was trying to win that jackpot i've, I've heard stories from people where they were trying to win you know play high limit and they finally won two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. and i was like over 10 years and you're playing high limit are you breaking even but you know you, we have our hobbies and there's plenty of uh people who have a hobby of riding a bicycle and they got the ten thousand dollar one because you know we put money into our hobbies uh, right. So trying to make sure I share so you can see what I see. Um, uh, and that's, uh, uh, David's comment. Um, Richard says, can, when you see a slot machine freezes for a brief five seconds or less during a track mode, what could that be? Um, uh, I still recommend a change, uh, percent, uh, change percent. Uh, no, um, you're using some of the tem terminology you've gotten someplace else. Uh, we, we, you know, I don't talk about a track mode. Um, it's, I don't like using terminology. Nobody understands. Um, uh, it's just meant to be a catch all. I like to be a little more specific. Um, but, uh, yeah, sometimes you play a machine and, and there's a hesitation. Um, it's, you know, you don't get that on the penny machines. That's just because it's, um, you know, whatever. It's a machine. It, uh, I don't take it as a signal. One of the counter indications of what you're asking about, uh, would it, you know, you're suggesting it could be a server command to change the percentage. Um, what I understand is that will never happen when you're playing it. And it's a technique that I use. It's one of the smaller ones. It doesn't have a number. I haven't given it a number. Um, it, one of the techniques that I use is um, uh, uh, try to come in when there's low traffic and the casino is sort of set up for um, locals to win, you know, uh, and then I sit down on a machine and I don't, change from that machine you know i'll do my 20 bets see if any of those you know i'm winning something and then i just never take a bathroom break i never you know move to another machine because i'm relying on them not being able to use the server to change it while i'm playing because that's just a no-go area my understanding is that's something they cannot do Somebody has to get up, walk away. It might take a minute, might take two minutes. But if you if it's out of money and uh, your card's not in it, then it only takes like a minute for them to go up. up let's update that one. We've been meaning to do that. It's all automatic, but not while you're playing. And I've used that to win because I sit down on a machine, which is a winner. And then it stays a winner from morning to afternoon to evening. Uh, and it wouldn't be a winner if I got up for five minutes and walked away. I'm using that technique. It's again, not a numbered one, but it's, you know, 
that's what I do. So, uh, some guys, six, seven, six. I wonder on the variance of the slots. Let me highlight this for you. Yep. I wonder on the variance of the slots. See, I'm glad you know about variance because I try to explain to people, they're like, well, it's 75% in, uh, 75 percent it's in 75 percent payout theoretical payout limit in nevada what is it 85 85 in ohio and 85 uh, in pennsylvania and people are like well it's 85 i'm like no it's not it's a lower limit there's actually a range it could be anywhere above 85 in ohio and um pennsylvania says well above 85 but below 100 and so, you know, this, the casino completely uses that. Of course, you, people making an assumption that, well, they would just go right to the bottom of the limit. And I'm like, no, that's a, that's a terrible business practice. Um, you know, people walk away in disgust. Uh, they have to keep their business going. So the, the limit that the state provides in the gaming regulations, if they provide one, the theoretical payout, usually isn't even used. I mean, they just stay above it, um, but they have their own business plan which depends on on that. So um, you had a specific question. I wonder on the variance of the stats. I live near parks and it tends to be very tight. Um, dude, go go check professorslots.com slash ABC27. Uh, that reporter, uh, Owens, I think his name was, um, he had a few things to say about parks. <laughs> um, and, and listen to the last, like, 30 seconds of that um, uh, segment because the two anchors kind of talk to each other and they say some pretty profound things. I don't know if they necessarily realized it as much, um, uh, but uh, about competition, casino competition, which is so important. Right. Um, and get back to our topic, but <laughs> uh Let's see. Um, oh, uh, Chuck says coming to Miami Villa later today. Uh, see you there. Um, no, uh, I have. I you know every week I I I work a lot of hours uh, on this, and one of the things that I uh, want to set up. Uh, and it's not just going to the casino because I want to record and I want to do something interesting. I want to ask certain questions. I want to do the assessment and and i thought yeah i'll start with miami valley um but if i were to go it'd be like tomorrow morning right you tell me if they're having a promotion and i'll definitely be there in the morning right uh but uh question is how many are having promotions right now uh, yeah miami valley the new hard rock cincinnati uh, boyd gaming now owns um uh belterra Park, not the resort in Indiana, but the park uh, next to it outside of Cincinnati. And I'll just start from there. Jeez, uh, Charles. Um, let's see. So that answers that. Uh, yeah, you know, frankly, I don't, I don't really care so much about well, I have this friend who won hundred thousand dollars jackpot. Um, I, your friend's not here, so let's keep it real. Uh, yeah, time clock strategy. We yep, yep, yep. Uh, use again using kind of words that we haven't defined here. Um, but that's a question. Uh, sort of running out of time for questions. I need to move back to the topic for today uh wise virgin asks what's the lowest percent payout slot setting allowed internally uh every slot machine has a chip which is specific for the state it's going to be located in i was talking to a used slot machine vendor distributor a pretty big company um and they uh Right. So they um, were distracted there with some of the comments. Uh, so they told me, uh, they explained to me, and it makes perfect sense um, uh, that if they want to move a, a used slot machine from one casino to another casino, um, uh, like a convenience store or wherever they would need to move it, uh, even take it for maintenance, uh, if it leaves the state, they have to, often they have to pull the chip because you can't have a slot machine with that chip. That's not for that state. 
I mean, it's that serious. Um, so what's the lowest allowed? Whatever the state requirement is. If it doesn't have a state requirement, then, you know, zero. But then that's what they could have, but they won't uh, because it's a terrible you know, people talk about, well, it just took my money. And I'm like, eh, not really. You kind of spent your money. You know, if you get a 75% return and let's say that holds over short a few bets, which is, you know, usually it's a long series. Um, on average, over time, you lose, you know, 75% or, or 85%. But that doesn't mean, you know, you have 100 bucks. Now you have 85 bucks, then you got 67 bucks, and then you got, you know, uh, uh, you know, you cycle through and each time it's less and you lose 75% and 75% and 75% and 75% and you go home with no money. Now, interesting enough, it's like you spent like $1,000 uh, if you do the math, which is interesting, but um, right. Uh, let's see. Ah, there is a promo today. Um, yeah, so 60 cents in the morning, uh, 60 cents, six, uh, you know, in the morning, tomorrow morning would be a great time. But I assume that, um, you know, Saturdays and Fridays wouldn't normally have it. Sometimes I tell people, figure out if they're going to have a promotion. Um, but sometimes I'm like, well, every Friday or Saturday, it's almost guaranteed. Um, so... Uh, right. All right. So, um, okay. Uh, let's get back to where we left off. So imagine you're just one of biggest, the one, the biggest jackpot ever, and you have your ID. Uh, you might even have a player's card, a uh, club card. So your personal information is on file with a casino. Next up is the hand pay and more decisions. If you've never won a taxable jackpot before, no matter what size, um, right. Put that way. Uh, no matter what size, uh, uh, the hand pay process is straightforward. You, one, you win a jackpot. The machine locks up. Sometimes the first thing you notice is the machine locking up, and then you notice that you want a jackpot. A slot attendant comes automatically. Uh, uh, you do paperwork. Someone else shows up to verify the jackpot. And finally, you're paid. Now, there's details in there, and I go over this um, hand pay process when winning an uh, automatically taxable jackpot playing slots. That's now both a video and website article. Um, it's uh, links to both will be in the video description and podcast show notes for listeners. It's also way back in podcast episode number seven. Uh, for those of yes, I have a podcast. It's called Professor Slots. Feel free. Uh, for those of you who have already won jackpots under $10,000, there are some slight changes to this process when winning big jackpots, those over, which I'll call over $10,000. In most states, jackpots of $10,000 or more require that the jackpot verifier is not a slot attendant, but rather a floor manager. Um, so, uh, Tip number one, I always try to give out these tips, right? There's plenty of things that I've said that are a tip, but I'm trying to be very specific about giving out tips on every show. Tip number one, you can you can tip the slot attendant and in my opinion should, but you can't tip the floor manager. If they say it's okay, the floor manager will take a tip to put into the group tip jar back in the break room for all slot attendants, but typically floor managers cannot receive tips. Tip number two, this is your chance. This is your chance, your precious chance to meet a floor manager. It's a priceless opportunity. Get to know them. Make friends if you can. Floor managers know a lot more about what's going on in a casino than slot attendants. Ask questions. Be nice. Thank me later. If you do have another choice to make, but you do have another choice to make, however, for jackpots just over the taxable limit, but under $10,000, casinos may provide banked, banded stacks of $5,000 when you ask for cash instead of a check. Other casinos only provide banded stacks of $10,000. I'm trying to get away from collecting those paper bands. I'm trying to get away from collecting those paper bands around $10,000 in, in hundreds, but it's been surprisingly, a surprisingly difficult habit to break. There's, you know, here, here's the two bands. Yeah, right. 
uh, here's the two bands I, I got um, uh, for that twenty seven thousand dollar jackpot. Uh, the, after taxes, uh, there was like five thousand something after the two bands of ten thousand um, dollars. And uh, so that's what I'm talking about. But either way, for a large jackpot where you ask for cash, you can expect banded stacks, sometimes called bricks of hundred dollar bills. Personally, I found it's nice when a slot attendant counts out hundred dollar bills in my hand. I have this little thing where I hold up my hand, they're putting hundred dollars bills in it. And then I kind of do this and sometimes, you know, they'll chuckle under their breath. Sometimes they've seen everything, but other people might chuckle because, you know, it's getting heavy. Um, but um, uh, try to have fun with it. Uh, professional, uh, professionally, I advise you to take most or all of the jackpot as a check. I'm trying to break my bad habit. Um, so this is if your plan includes requesting some or all your taxable jackpot in cash. It's really your choice, however. What's your plan again? Remember, preparation is key. If you do request cash and end up leaving the casino without spending it, I should mention what happens at a bank when you go deposit that $10,000 or more in cash. Um, It's just the same as any other cash deposit, except for the currency transaction report, CTR. The CTR is a reporting requirement for U.S. financial institutions regarding all cash deposits, withdrawals, and currency exchanges of $10,000 or more. When making a deposit of at least $10,000, it will be reported to the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, FinCEN, within the U.S. Treasury Department. FinCEN was created in 1990 and became its own bureau under the U.S. Patriot Act, passed in 2002. In part, it monitors and analyzes financial transactions for illegal transactions. This includes financial crimes related to money laundering and corruption. Over recent years, I've deposited more than $10,000 multiple times at my bank and never had a concern. They do ask where the money came from, to which I typically respond, I want it at the casino. I don't think you have any cause for concern as earning money at a casino isn't an illegal transaction. My lack of concern here. Uh, hinges on understanding that big jan- jackpots generate a, my lack of concern is because du- big jackpots generate a W2G tax form when won at a casino. So if FinCEN does become interested within its own department, the U.S. Treasury is the IRS and they can confirm that form was received for that r- roughly that amount of cash at the, roughly the same time. Nevertheless, I thought you should know about the CTR. It was kind of a surprise to me. Um, This is what happens when you start dealing with larger amounts of money. There is another aspect to accepting a lot of cash you should probably be aware of. In my mind, I'm more practically, it's more practically important than the CTR. Uh, It's this, how much cash can, how much cash can you carry? Let's say you're wearing a men's pair of jeans or trousers with typical size pockets. Let's further say you're not wearing a jacket or carrying any sort of purse. Finally, let's assume all your cash is in $100 bills. Under these circumstances, how much cash can you carry without it being in your hand or sticking out somewhere for anyone to notice? With a wallet in one pocket and a mobile phone in another, I've been able to tuck away $200 bills. That's only $20,000 in all the pockets of a typical pair of men's jeans. Let's say you want a big jackpot, which you accepted as cash and other after taxes have $50,000 in hand. Or in my case, I had $25,000 in hand and and not all of it would fit. What do you do with it? Yes, you can fill all your pockets and with $20,000 of it, I've done it. Uh, But what about the remainder? Do you ask the casino to brown to provide a brown paper bag, perhaps? <laughs> I've been to, in this situation and faced this dilemma. Once again, make sure you have a plan in case you win. Um, so I will show you this. Now, this is $100 bills, excuse me, $1 bills, not $100 bills, $1 bills. And there's 100 of them to make this brick bundle, whatever you want to call it, um, one hundred dollars. It's used bills. So if you were to get this at a casino, um, but instead be hundred dollar bills, it would actually be a little thinner because they're mostly new bills. Uh, and so I, I have that for an upcoming video, and I'm going to take a look at the gamble box and the Win Bank 200. Try to put something together to, to how much how much 
fits into those and you know uh, one dollar bill is the same size as a hundred dollar bill and uh this way i don't have to withdraw ten thousand dollars who does that anyway um uh and uh i i know some slots players spend that much but um so yeah uh you know you, you drop this in your pocket and you know you can tell by the size of my hand and whatever uh that's quite a hefty amount and you can get one in your front pocket on the left and one in your front pocket on the right uh maybe you can get a phone in there too keys to your car well, in the back pocket, you can't put really men's men's jeans have much bigger pockets than women's jeans, but men's jeans, you know, it still wouldn't fit. It's too tall. You know, the the, the back pocket is not deep enough uh, to, to accept that. And if you fold it, well, <laughs> uh, that's a uh, obvious. So shall we say? So, um, yeah. Uh, you now, if you have a jacket and you got pockets, you know, I, I've done that, too. And, and just don't put too much in any one pocket. Uh, anyway, um, so one final note about getting home. Feel free to ask the casino for security to walk you to your car. Uh, they're perfectly happy to do so. And like me, try to remember where you parked your car. <laughs> Take it from me. It, it was surprisingly hard to remember that little fact when I was clutching tens of thousands of dollars in my sweaty hands. <laughs> that first time, uh, it's just like, I'm sure it's around here somewhere. <laughs> um so uh, uh i still have to figure out how to handle shock anyway uh one time i was sitting one time uh about so let's talk a little bit about income taxes uh one time i was sitting two seats away from someone who looked like they had never been in a high limit slots room at a casino you know the look right um do, do you know that look anyway they they looked both nervous and like they wanted to go um, and, and, you know, like they're like, oh, I'm spending so much money. That's, that was $20 and that was $20, ah, but they want to be there and, you know, they, they're struggling. Um, but suddenly, and it's always sudden, they won a $4,800 jackpot. I watched it come up. They just nodded to themselves and starting hitting the cash out button, which naturally enough, wasn't working because the slot machine had locked up due to winning a taxable jackpot automatically taxable jackpot when the cash out button wouldn't work you know there's they stood up they're walking away they were reaching back tap 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 and they're like what's going on so naturally i tried to be helpful as i tried to be helpful with you guys and walked right into it uh uh um i said oh the machine's locked up because you've won a big jackpot don't worry, the slot attendant should be here any moment to help you with getting it as well as paying taxes. <laughs> I was just trying to be helpful. I imagine you know what happened next. Taxes? Taxes? As they became more and more upset, I tried to disengage from the conversation. Luckily for me, the slot attendant arrived right about then to save me. Slot attendants are great. Seriously, I always remember how upset this taxable jackpot winner was whenever I work with a slot attendant. It's uh, is what I remember, remember whenever I tip my slot attendant after winning my own taxable jackpots. So if or when you win a automatically taxable jackpot, I should try to say that automatically. Um, it's all taxable. Uh, you'll be working for, you'll be working with a slot attendant. I've already described what that is like, um, but let's discuss gambling income taxes for a moment. Uh, on Twitter, one of my 10,000 plus followers. Yes, I'm on Twitter. What do you think? At Professor Slots? That's my, that's my handle. Um, so the, the, one of my followers uh, said, the amount of the taxable jackpot needs to be raised. Right? The amount of the taxable jackpot needs to be raised. Um, and uh, my response was, why? It's still taxable, even if you don't get a W2G hand pay. But I do appreciate the sentiment. I really do. I, I understand, uh, end quote, uh, I understand that, um, you know, how do you, um, uh, <laughs> sorry, the animals are acting up. Um, so, you know, if it wasn't for the W2G hand pay, um, you know, you might Many people might, I, I don't have actual numbers, I don't want to know, um, might not pay taxes on that gambling income. Uh, and, but 
you know, if you win $10,000 or $60,000, you think the IRS is going to notice? I mean, when you, when you deposit it, unless you keep it in your mattress or something, <laughs> the cash in your mattress. Um, uh, but even then the W2 check came through. And so, uh, you know, you, you have to pay taxes on that or you have to submit it. It is submitted for you. So if you win $10 at a casino, it's taxable income. This gets confusing fast though, because what if you spend that 10,000, uh, that $10, uh, if you win $10 at a casino, what if you spend that $10 in the next few minutes without it ever leaving the slot machine? Sometime later, we can talk about the more practical aspects of casino gambling and disconnects with general requirements from the IRS. We've had a conversation back in February on a live stream about that um, uh, just before tax season. Maybe that's the best time to go up with go up come come out with this, talk about this again uh, before next April. So in brief, the IRS says all gambling income is taxable and state gaming regulations usually say uh, uh, using an electronic device during gameplay is a felony. To, if it helps your slots, if it helps your play, it's a gambling device and it's usually a felony. So how do you reconcile those two? Maybe you have idyllic memory. You know, I don't. You know, I've got a decent memory. I don't have, I don't remember everything that ever happens. Number after number after number after number, you know, and there's 10,000 of them because I spent eight hours in the casino. You know, a practical compromise would be to record how much bankroll you walk into a casino with and how much winnings you walk out with, including the free market value of any gifts. At least doing this is possible. What isn't in dispute um, is what happens when the casino issues a W-2G income tax form reported directly to the IRS. That makes it all easy. If you choose to accept a taxable jackpot, then you will receive a W-2G, an automatically taxable jackpot. As an aside, some people can't afford or otherwise don't want taxable jackpots. For instance, my family friends, Lois and Dave, who are on the live stream, um, uh, you know, are in are in my article that I wrote when I went to their casino and they were their family friends. Um, uh, I have this article called Seminole Brighton Casino Florida Trip Report. Uh, it's also for those listening on the uh, podcast, episode 27. Uh, but Dave and Lois, Lois and Dave are from... Canada and often uh, are often in the live chat. For them, any gambling income from their annual visits to U.S. casinos is foreign income and potentially subject to taxation by the Canadian government and may result in a change in their type of visa. Yikes. You know, that's this is serious stuff. And apparently, as usual with income taxes, what you know, what what to do is very individualized. My admittedly limited understanding is and please don't consider me as any kind of expert with regards to international tax law, my Canadian friends can earn some income when gambling in the U S but not a lot of income, a $60,000 taxable jackpot might may well be too much may cause too difficult of a situation. And and is therefore unwanted. Maybe you can always choose not to accept a taxable jackpot. You can choose to walk away. An old slots joke is the only way to legally avoid paying taxes after winning a jackpot of $1,200 or more is simply to not accept the winnings. That's funny. Yes, it's funny, but true. Also be aware that taxable limit is instead $600 in some states like Massachusetts, at least for the moment. Who wants that and why? Well, that's yet another topic we can talk about later sometime, especially if it becomes more common in other states. Finally, there are the tax choices you'll need to make when filling out the paperwork for the taxable jackpot with the slot attendant. A federal income tax withdrawal from your winnings is typically optional. State income tax withdrawal is very state dependent. Local income tax withdrawal exists if the casino you are at is located within a city's limits. Also, that's part of the hand pay. If you are in a city that has local taxes but the casino is not, then you've got to work that out 
when annual tax preparation time. Other withdrawals on the hand pay may exist, such as a non-refundable 3% tax on jackpots over $1,200 in Mississippi, as, as imposed by state gaming regulations. If you keep good gambling records, it usually works out well to choose to not pay federal taxes. Why? Because keeping good gambling records means you have a, you'll have gambling deductions, federal, uh, to apply during your annual income tax preparation. If you don't keep gambling records or federal gaming deductions aren't allowed due to your overall income, then you will need to always include a federal income tax withdrawal with every jackpot or suffer through an income tax payment burden when you eventually file your annual income tax return. If taxes, well, you know, here we are talking about taxes. Uh, I'll keep this short. If you don't keep good gambling records, then frankly, you should start. Why? Because the danger of not keeping gambling records is having to pay income taxes when they could have been avoided. What if you win big? What if you win so big that everything changes? Isn't that why you're interested in my content to succeed, to win more and more often? Keep gambling records just in case you win a massive jackpot. You know, the gambling deductions become possible if you don't have enough income now to have that. Uh, you know, we prepare to succeed. This is what we do. Um, so, you know, you could have one massive jackpot or suddenly, you know, use my techniques to find out morning after promotions, da, 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 works great at your casino. You know, you found a casino where that works at, um, you know, so you might not win a $60,000 jackpot, but you might win lots of $1,200 hand pays, which, you know, if you win 10 or 20 or 30 of those begins to be equal to a large jackpot win. Make it part of your plan. Okay. Some time ago, a fan of my website and podcast named Richard from Gainesville, Georgia, contacted me via Twitter after he won a $60,000 slot jack, slots jackpot. He took a check and immediately walked out of the casino. I was proud of how well he had, he had handled it and told him so at the time. How he handled a, a big jackpot reminded me of what it was like. My first time I didn't, it didn't do as well as Richard. So we're talking about this now so you can do better than I did and perhaps as well as Richard if you win a large taxable jackpot. Um, so we are one minute over. I tried to talk a little fast. Uh, and... Um, Steve says, uh, uh, yep, thank you. Uh, you have a great day, uh, everyone. Um, uh, it's wonderful to chat with you. And I am will, you know, have fun, be safe, and I'll, I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye. Remember to visit professorslots.com slash subscribe to get my free report revealing the top seven online resources for improving your gambling performance, including the one I've used as a top-tier slot machine casino gambler. This is the next segment of the show on slot machine casino gambling. Here I provide a brief overview of the current state of gambling in a U.S. state, territory, or the federal district, emphasizing by far anything of interest to slot machine casino gamblers. Up next is Arizona slot machine casino gambling in 2020. Here goes. Arizona slot machine casino gambling consists of 25 American Indian tribal casinos offering slot machines, video poker, video blackjack, and video kino. The minimum legal gambling age in Arizona depends upon the gambling activity. For land-based casinos, poker rooms, the lottery, and parimutuel wagering, it's 21. For bingo and pull tabs, it's 18. In 1993, 21 tribes established an approved gaming compact with Arizona. Much later, in 2017, the Hopi tribe obtained an approved gaming compact. These gaming compacts limit the total number of Vegas-style gaming machines to 20,576 in the state occasionally adjusted for population growth. At the time I wrote this, there were about 15,600 gaming machines in operation. The maximum bet on gaming machines is $25. Next up is a usually short statement about slot machine private ownership, which I have included in case you live in this U.S. state and are considering owning a slot machine. Here it is. It is legal to own a slot machine privately in Arizona. In 1995, due to the growth of tribal gaming in Arizona, the state legislature created the Arizona Department of Gaming, ADG, a few years after the successful negotiation of tribal state gaming compacts. ADG's purpose is as an independent regulatory body with expertise in gaming. This tribal gaming oversight is in partnership with Arizona's 22 American Indian tribes with tribal state compacts. 
In 2015, ADG's responsibilities expanded to include oversight of parimutuel wagering, racing, boxing, and mixed martial arts events conducted in Arizona. In this section, I discuss Arizona gambling establishments. Arizona has 25 American Indian tribal casinos and non-tribal parimutuel wagering without slot machines. The largest casino in Arizona is Casino del Sol, having over 1,300 gaming machines. The second largest casino is Desert Diamond Casino, West Valley Resort, having 1,136 gaming machines. Parimutuel wagering of races is available in Arizona, but these facilities do not offer slot machines. There are 25 tribal casinos in Arizona. As usual, when there are too many casinos to mention here, a complete list and map is on my webpage for this state at professorslots.com az. As an alternative to enjoying Arizona slot machine casino gambling, consider exploring casino options in a nearby state. Bordering Arizona is, to the north, Utah, to the east, New Mexico, to the south, Mexico's states of Sonora and Baja California, and to the west, California and Nevada. To visit any of my articles on these U.S. states, simply visit professorslots.com, followed by its two-letter postal designation. For example, my Utah Slots article is available at professorslots.com UT. Are you interested in sharing and learning with other slots enthusiasts in Arizona? If so, join our Arizona Slots community on Facebook at professorslots.com FBAZ. All you'll need is a Facebook profile to join this private Facebook group freely. There, you'll be able to privately share your slots experiences as well as chat with players about slots gambling in or near Arizona. Again, use this convenient link I've created to go directly to our group on Facebook, professorslots.com slash FBAZ. Join us. The tribal state gaming compacts between Arizona and its tribes have placed limits on theoretical payouts for gaming machines based on the type of game. The minimum theoretical payout limits for Class 3 machines during the expected lifetime of the game and including bonus games are, for games of chance, that is to say Vegas-style slot machines, 80%. For games of skill, like video blackjack and video poker, 83%. And for video kino, 75%. Return statistics are not publicly available. In summary, Arizona slot machine casino gambling consists of 25 tribal casinos with 15,600 Vegas-style gaming machines offering slots, video poker, video blackjack, and video kino. Over the last year, Harris Phoenix Ak Chin Casino Resort has fallen to the third largest casino in Arizona with 1,135 slot machines, with Casino Del Sol Resort now taking second place with one more slot machine than Harris Ak Chin in Phoenix. Otherwise, the Fort McDowell Casino in Fountain Hills has reopened as the Ricopa Casino Resort. Remember to visit professorslots.com slash subscribe to get my free report revealing the top seven online resources for improving your gambling performance, including the one I've used as a top-tier slot machine casino gambler. Part one of the next episode of the Professor Slots podcast will include a live stream Q&A session on YouTube. Next week's live stream will be about playing slots in Las Vegas. Remember, my weekly Q&A session on YouTube is on Saturdays from noon until 1 p.m. Eastern time. Bring whatever slots questions you have and I'll do my best to answer them. An easy to remember link to my YouTube channel is youtube.com slash professor slots. Feel free to stop by any time during my hour long live Q&A session. Part two of the next episode of the Professor Slots podcast is another brief overview of the current state of gambling in a U.S. state, territory, or the federal district. Next time I'll be talking to you about the great U.S. state of Arkansas. That's the end of another episode of the Professor Slots podcast. Thanks so much for listening. Show notes for this episode are on my website at professorslots.com slash episode 117. I plan to have the next episode come out very soon for you, where I'll have more amazing content for the show. Until the next episode, have fun, be safe, and make good choices. Bye.